In our first reading, we are told that the Lord God takes some of the spirit that had been bestowed on Moses and bestows it on 70 of the elders of the Israelites. All of them become prophets in their own right, like Moses was. Two of those upon whom the spirit came to rest were not gathered with the others when this occurred. And Joshua, who at the time was an aide to Moses, wants Moses to stop the two of them, Eldad and Medad, from prophesying. Moses answered him by saying, Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Moses realizes that the word of God cannot be contained. It must be spread by God's people. Similarly, in the gospel, the apostle John sees someone healing in Jesus' name and wants Jesus to stop him from doing so. Jesus answered that he will not be stopped because, as Jesus says, whoever is not against us is for us. And so Jesus is saying essentially the same thing, the Christian message will not be contained. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior, is the good news of the gospel that must be proclaimed to the whole world. Unfortunately, it is a common failing that we have as human beings to want to keep things to ourselves. We want to be in the inner circle, no one else. We're reluctant to bring others into the community because they might bring change or new ideas that we aren't sure we will like. But that cannot be the way for the Christian community or any Christian community. We are always about expanding, inviting, welcoming. We are always challenged to change and find new ways to meet our brothers and sisters where they are in their faith. New ministry opportunities are our stock in trade. So brothers and sisters, this is also true of our parish community of St. Angela Marici. Right now though, we have a limitation to our future growth as a parish, as a people of God due to the debt that we owe to the archdiocese. We incurred that debt for the construction of this beautiful worship space and our administration building and the renovation of our parish life center for our faith formation programs. So take a moment to look around you. Look again at this beautiful church you had the vision to build this beautiful church. And in many ways, we have been extremely fortunate that your vision came to fruition so quickly. It might have been otherwise if the Cardinal and the Archdiocese had not shared your vision, we would not have had the funds to begin construction so quickly. And if we had been delayed in our construction, we could have experienced numerous setbacks from the various storms that have come through in the last four years or from the outbreak of the COVID pandemic. These also could have led to incredible construction cost increases due to material and labor sh shortages we could owe perhaps triple or double what we owe now. And we have had the luxury of enjoying our beautiful spaces while at the same time paying down on the debt we owe the archdiocese for them. And I should say, the archdiocese has been very understanding of us during the time of the pandemic. 
Let me be very clear about something because some people have a misconception of, way, of the way the church works. They believe that everything flows down from Rome right on through the archdiocese uh, to us, that the archdiocese provides everything to a parish free of charge. And that is not the case. Our archdiocese expects each of its parishes to stand on their own two feet. And we are now called to validate that trust that they had in us. For this reason, we are beginning a capital campaign entitled Built on Faith, Growing Together as One. Our goal is 3.7 million, but I believe we can exceed that. It will be a four-year campaign. And we have historically raised more than a million per year for our building needs. I also say this because you have always stepped up where there was a need. Several weeks ago, I asked for help with our faith formation programs. We needed catechists. By the end of that week, we had all slots filled and a few catechists to spare. If we reach our goal, we can knock down our debt by a significant amount. We have already cut down our debt by half. The cost of all the construction projects was, eight, was 16 million, and it is already down to eight. And we may be able to cut it by half again. And you may ask, well, why do we need to do that? The answer is simple, so that we may continue the mission we have been given. The mission is the same as it was in the time of Jesus and in the time of Moses. It is to bring people to God. You may recall that I said at the time we began construction that Right now, we need to build buildings, but what we are really about is building community. That is still true. We do that by continuing to grow as a parish. It may surprise you to know we are on, one of only four parishes that have been constructed in this archdiocese in the last two decades. That is not because of a lack of need, because this archdiocese is still growing, and that while other dioceses around the country are stagnating or losing parishes. Now this is how it came about. Sometime in the year 2000 or thereabouts, Archbishop Fiorenza gathered with his presbyteral council, the council of priests that advise him, and he asked the question, where do we most need a parish? And everyone pointed to the map to Siena in Missouri City, us. And they said, there, there is where we need a parish. Okay, maybe it didn't literally happen that way, but the idea is certainly the same. Together, the Cardinal and, well, the Cardinal followed Bishop Fiorenza's suggestion, but they gathered and they said, this is where our diocese is growing the fastest, and that's where we need a parish. So, brothers and sisters, it would be easy to rest on our laurels and say, well, we've done enough, but we can't. You know, when a person becomes insulated, isolated, they die, spiritually, if not physically. And the same can happen to a parish. We could look at all of this and say, look at what we have accomplished. Let's keep it to ourselves. But we can't do that. In fact, I'd like you to do me a favor. Close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes and I want you to, to picture a child. Not any particular child, just a child's face. That child is the future. 
It is a child that will be baptized here, that will make their first reconciliation and first communion here. They'll be confirmed here and maybe even celebrate their wedding here. Then they will bring their child here for baptism and the cycle will start all over again. That child that you are picturing, that child may be here now, or that child may be a future child who comes because we grow and expand and continue the mission. Now what better investment is there than that child? Keep your eyes closed or close them again. I want you to picture this. St. James in our second reading today says, reminds us of the fleeting nature of wealth and possession. That wonderful practical apostle says, your wealth has rotted away, clothes have become moth-eaten, your gold and silver has corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. You know, that is exactly what happens when you hoard Hoarding is just another way of becoming insular and isolated. So now you have two pictures in your mind. The picture of that child, happy, smiling, receiving the grace of the sacraments, and the picture St. James gave us, rusty, corroded metal. Of course, today it could be bank accounts or whatever, but it's the same principle. I, for one, would much rather have the picture of that child than of all that money just standing there. You can open your eyes now. So here's what we are about today. We're kicking off our campaign today, and what we need right now as part of our effort are volunteers to help with various aspects of the campaign. We already have a strong leadership committee in place, but we need your help. I'd like to encourage everyone to volunteer time or talent to the campaign. You can help us by helping out with the campaign receptions that we're going to have, by being part of our mailing team, making phone calls, making follow-up contacts with fellow parishioners, inviting them to the receptions. The receptions will be where we will give all the information, where we will make the appeal. So again, we need help in making all of that a success. So I'm gonna ask you to look in your pews. You'll find some cards there and some pencils. These volunteer cards are the way you can volunteer to help us. Please take one now. If you believe you can help us today and can make that decision, you're, we ask you to print your name, address, phone number, and email on the card, and then check any boxes that you are willing to volunteer for. So as you're looking at those, you can fill them out right here and now. What we're gonna do is collect all of them that have been filled out at collection time. Just put them in the collection basket. We do appreciate that. Now, if you had agreed to help us out for this campaign way back in 2020, when we were going to begin it and then had to shut it all down because of COVID, we would ask you to fill out a card once again, uh, reminding us that you are wanting to help us out with the campaign. Uh, so please, if you would fill out a new card. There are no special qualifications to help with any of this just a willingness to commit a small amount of your time to help us reach our goal. Now, I read in our brochure that will be going out to all the parish shortly that the campaign will be a fun and rewarding experience. And yes, I was skeptical like you. So I went directly to the campaign director that we hired from Guidance and Giving, and I said, are those words true? Will this be a fun and rewarding campaign? 
and he was nodding very vigorously, yes, 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 it will be a fun and rewarding campaign. I believe him. I believe him because I saw some of the names they were giving to the receptions, like Taco Tuesday, Pasta with the Fathers, Pasta with Padre, uh, a Wind Down Friday, so we're gonna have with a W I N E, all that kind of stuff. So all of this sounds like it will be very fun, and um, I know that uh, so far that's been the case. So I think it will be true for the rest of the campaign. So if you're filling out those cards, um, in the coming weeks you will be provided information about the campaign and the many means that we will be inviting other families, every family, to attend a campaign reception where we will formally present our ideas and our plans and make our appeal. And uh, as I say, if you sign up today, you can drop that in the collection basket but if not, you can go online and there'll be a card to fill out there, or you may fill it out during the week, bring it to Mass next weekend, and place it in the collection basket. So brothers and sisters, I know you will step forward on this, as you always have. I know that because I have seen how much you care for this parish. It is truly our home and our family and it is here we continue the mission of Christ.